No, seriously, it's the monkey in the machine. Hello, and welcome to a new episode of the monkey in the machine. So, oh, I got something spicy for you today. A week ago, they released, OpenAI released, ChatGPT 5, the new model, the trumpeted PhD level large language model, and it crashed and burned. My goodness, <laughs> Sam Alban, the con man running OpenAI, had been uh, posting on social media for some time. This is it. This is it. Feel the AGI, PhD level. Posting pictures of the Death Star. You know, saying what investors want to hear. Believe it or not, ChatGPT, most popular LLM in the world, it's losing like a billion dollars a year, despite all the pain users. Anyway, yeah, the release was a massacre. Not only there were technical glitches and usage limits, which users hate, but they removed the ability to choose the model, it was GPT-5 or die. And people with all these models, they like to choose. There are certain models that they feel more comfortable with, certain models that are better at one thing than the other. Not with GPT-5, it was GPT-5 or die. And the users hate it the change in personality because you know people get attached to these things emotionally and even if they don't they don't you have writers who like the style of a model and suddenly they lost it the chain broke and it was hilarious it was hilarious the memes were delicious. Someone asked GPT-5 to create a template with the photos, names of the US presidents and the years they served the White House. And it was, oh my goodness, Richard Nixon was suddenly Richard Ninu. The photo of Obama, whose name was changed, looked like uh, Dave Chappelle. Another president started serving in the 60s and ended in 1574. It was embarrassing, embarrassing. Uh, not only users started canceling their subscription, which is a tragedy for a company that is already losing billions. But people in mass started a change.org petition to bring back GPT-4. I mean, talk about a backlash. It was horrendous. Um, it got to the point that the CEO of Character AI, another competitor, outright said, oh, we're not looking for AGI anymore. Uh, the CEO of the company that is fighting a lawsuit because their model drove a kid to suicide. It's dark, this stuff is dark. But here is the thing. It's not that GPT-5 failed is not that AGI, Artificial General Intelligence, is not achievable. 
theoretically it is. It's the, this was the funeral of the idea that LLMs are the path to AGI. That's what died. And the schadenfreude on social media is from everybody who is not a fan of the technology. It was a cause of celebration. It was it was like it was like a beach party in 1964, I tell you. And what is concerning is that people who really want to control the technology, since LLMs were sold as a path to AGI, they feel vindicated, they feel relief, and that's a huge mistake. For those enthusiastic about the arrival of AGI and for Skynet to to give us handouts and all live in bliss, creating art and receiving UBI. It was a big disappointment. So both sides had really strong emotions, but remember what died was the idea of LLMs as the path to AGI. And it was sold. The idea was sold. The companies created created this and invested heavily into these massive data centers to scale up, to push the envelope, to make these things little Godzilla's because it was the path to AGI, remember? So it is not. But do not be fooled. This is a taxonomy issue. AI, AI, not AGI or narrow AI. AI is a field of computer science um, that aims at creating systems that perform tasks uh, usually requiring uh, human intelligence, human-like intelligence. That's the goal. It's not a technology itself. It has technologies to achieve that goal. And everybody is focused and, is, and knows about machine learning. There is a taxonomy, there is a little tree. And there are other types of technology. There is symbolic AI. It's used in legal compliance. Uh, there is search and optimization, pathfinding in robotics. There is uncertain reasoning. You may be familiar with the term fuzzy logic that is um, used for risk assessment in finance. And even within machine learning, LLMs are not machine, are not the sole technique within machine learning. You have supervised, unsupervised, reinforcement learning, um, and these technologies have applications from marketing to autonomous vehicles to you name it, credit scoring when you apply for a loan and it's denied. Most likely you're dealing with a supervised learning algorithm. And in these techniques of machine learning, there is deep learning. Deep learning is where you have these neuron-like uh, nodes that 
by trial and error adjust their weights and calculate probabilities, right? And within this deep learning branch, there is the large language models for text and to generate your the funny pictures that then you use as photos on social media. But there is also uh, recurrent ne neural networks, uh, convolutional neural networks, and you have uses there that are booming right now. Surveillance, the military, forecasting, causing financial crashes, and whether or not AGI can arrive, and if it can arrive, whether or not it happens tomorrow or in 10 or in 100 years, can be anything. So everybody focused on LLMs and it wasn't that path. There is a lot happening in AI. There are a lot of applications and it's entering, it's pervasive, is reaching corners that we never thought could be reached by machine. And some of these things are worth of celebration, discovering new medical treatments and drugs. <laughs> Discussion about healthcare, pharmaceuticals, the business model is another thing, but there are things to celebrate. There are things that are really cool and that make people happy. But there are many other uses that may be beneficial, may be great tools. But the fact that there is right now like a funeral mood because of the <laughs> failure of GPT-5 and the realization that LLMs have hit a wall. There is the need for people not to forget that AI is alive and kicking. I think it's impossible to stop, but it is possible to govern and it's necessary to do so. Like any other technology, in order for it to augment rather, rather than diminish human capabilities and agency, to make it a force for good, it is important that it is handled in a certain way, in an ethical way in a responsible way. And this will not happen if everybody is right now partying or crying because of the GPT-5 slash LLM slash AGI debacle. It's important to keep in mind that the field is much more than a chatbot making you feel good and hallucinating and being your therapist and generating funny memes. It is here to stay. It is booming and it requires the involvement of all stakeholders so we can make it a success. I'm not a Luddite. I don't want to go with a baseball bat and destroy the machine. And I'm pretty sure neither are you because somewhere there is someone you care about whose life could be saved or made better by the good uses of the technology. And this has, this coin has another side though, and that is the myriad of risks, bias, uh, discrimination, 
um, pagness, um, misunderstood optimization, efficiency at the cost of human safety, you name it. And it is important that everybody is involved, that everybody is aware of what's really happening. As said, you have the extremes, but as usual, the sweet spot is through the middle. And that is to govern these things smartly, fairly, so the benefits extend to everybody, and to do so in a responsible way. And at the very least, for people to be educated and avoid harms like the ones we're seeing now so often just small tastes there are more and more cases reported cases of people who lose their minds by basically becoming addicted to to the LLMs. I I thought you would love this this news. If you're sad, don't be sad. If you are <laughs> enjoying a Schadenfreude, calm down. Discuss this with your friends. You're gonna be the, the soul of the party. Think about it, read about it, and let's see what the future brings. Thanks for watching.